everybody, Data Pioneer here, and thank you for joining me today. I'm out on my uh, Debian 10 Buster Linux terminal, and today I want to talk about a subject that uh, newbies uh, have a tendency to uh, misunderstand because they're more familiar with, with Windows, and if they're transitioning from Windows to Linux, they have a little bit of trouble with it, and that is how the file system and, and directory and folder structure for Linux is different from that of Windows. And so uh, most Linux uh, newbies understand Windows. Uh, they understand that there are uh, logical drive letters and, uh, and C colon backslash is the uh, logical drive letter for the hard drive. Uh, they may even see in Windows systems uh, D colon backslash, which is the CD-ROM designation. And if you're uh, an old Windows user, you might even remember back when you had an A colon backslash, and that is for floppy disks. They don't exist anymore. Uh, but anyway, uh, Windows systems uh, for its folder structure uh, work with what's called logical drive letters. Each drive, each partition of the uh, hard drive, uh, and each device uh, connected to a Windows system has its own logical drive letter, uh, A, D, C, E, F, G, H, etc., etc. That's not the case in Linux, and so for the Linux newbie, um, they have a little bit of trouble understanding how uh, Linux file systems and directory structures are different, and so let's get into that today. I want to talk about that. Um, unlike the uh, Windows systems, Linux is a hierarchical file system, and what do I mean by that? What I mean is, is that uh, in Linux, every directory, uh, and it's called directories in Linux, not folders, uh, and that's a throwback from the Unix days. Every directory in Linux uh, falls underneath what's referred to as the root. So let me do a PWD here. I'm in the home directory. Okay, so I'm in forward slash home, forward slash data pioneer. And by the way, you'll notice that it's forward slash, not backslash, like it is in Windows. And that's a Unix convention as well, right? But if I change to the directory to the root, okay, and do a PWD, and you can see I'm in the root directory here of the Linux file system. That's the uppermost directory of a Linux file system, all right? There's a command in Linux called tree, and you don't need to know that what that is. I had to install it here in Debian 10 because it didn't exist, but there is a directory uh, command rather called tree that allows you to see what the structure of the file system looks like. So let me clear the screen. Let me run a tree. And if you do a capital L switch and one to the uppermost level, one layer deep, and then you do a dash T for directory structure only, it'll list out the directories uh, under the Linux file system here in Debian 10 Buster. And so you can see that we have 22 directories here, starting with bin, which is a symbolic link to this directory here, user, okay, USR. The bin directory here in our system for Debian 10 is actually a symbolic link out to uh, a user bin subdirectory of the user directory, all right? That's not the case in every Linux system. So just have to note that this is different in Debian 10. And so we have bin, boot, dev, etc, home, you know, lost and found, media, mount, etc. And we'll get into what these are and what, what's in those in the Linux system. But I just wanted to show you that you can list out those in your Linux system for whatever distro of Linux that you're running. Uh, in my case, Debian 10 Buster. And you can use the tree commands. You can just copy that command. It should work in your Linux distro. And you can get the same kind of... Um, listing of directory structure here for your particular distro. All right, so you might be asking yourself, um, you know, do all Linux distributions follow this convention? Uh, or is there a convention? Is it mandated? Is it uh, not mandated? You know, is it something that uh, distro developers can adhere to or not? Well, the answer to that question is kind of mixed, but uh, for the most part, uh, directory structures in Linux are uh, not mandated, but they are followed by convention in something called the FHS, which is the File System Hierarchy Standard. And I'm out on Wikipedia right here. I want to use this website as my means of 
going into what each of these are today. And so the FHS is a file system standard that was developed by the Linux Foundation, by the way. Um, and so to answer that question, yes, most Linux distributions follow it. Uh, and um, and you'll see that convention being followed in the distros. Of so the uppermost level is forward slash, which is the primary hierarchy root directory structure for the entire system, okay, or the file system in Linux. You'll see that one uh, as the uppermost level. Underneath that is the forward slash bin, and these are the binaries. These are the essential command binaries that need to be available in Linux for single user mode. And those are things like cat for concatenary, uh, ls for listing, cp for copy, etc. Contain all of the essential commands for what's called the bash or the born again shell. Uh, in Linux, uh, I don't want to get too technical here, if you're especially if you're a newbie, but um, uh, you'll learn more about the Bash as you learn more about Linux. Right? And so, yeah, these are the binaries. The forward slash boot directory is the directory that contains all the bootloader files, and these are the things that allow Linux to boot up. It contains not only the bootloader, but it also contains the kernel, which is the heart of the system. And it also contains the init RD and the init system, this init um, 5 or V and the system D. All right, the next level is the uh, dev directory that falls under the root. Dev contains the uh, folder structure for the device files. And those can be dev null, dev disk, or dev SDA1, which is typically the first device and partition that you see on a newly installed device in Linux. Dev TTY is for your teletype terminal, which is the old Unix throwback name for a pseudo terminal in Linux. You'll learn more about that as you get into Linux. That's called Dev TTY. And then you have something called Dev RAM. All right, the next directory is the Dev ETC or Etsy as I call it. It's also referred to as the Cetera directory in Linux. And that is um, the directory that contains all of the configuration files, the system-wide, host-specific configuration files in Linux. And then you have several that fall underneath that. I'm not going to go into all of those right now. Okay, so the next directory here is the home directory. And the home directory is where all the users' uh, uh, files and personal settings reside in the system, in the Linux system. And so for my particular case, my home directory is forward slash home forward slash data pioneer and underneath that are my other directories such as downloads, documents, pictures, videos, music, etc, etc and I'll show you that when we get into the file manager GUI. That's where the home directory, what the home directory is for in Linux, so that is to contain all the home directories of the users in the system. There's only one user on mine, I'm a single user mode, a Debian 10 buster. Linux system, but if you had multiple users, then each user would have their own home directories, similar to how Windows handles uh, profiles. The next directory is called lib, L-I-B, and so forward slash lib are where all the libraries essential for the binaries reside, for sbin and for, for bin, okay, for the system binaries and for regular binaries in the system. So these are the associated libraries that are essential for the the binaries that reside in the system, user binaries or system. The next uh, uh, directory I want to talk about is forward slash media. Now forward slash media is the mount points for all your removable media, such as USB devices that you insert in your system or CD-ROM devices, if you have an external CD-ROM for instance, or any other external um, hardware device. You could even have an external floppy if you wanted to use a floppy disk. Uh, but anyway, when you insert those into the Linux system, they're automatically detected in most Linux distros today, and they're going to be auto-mounted here, forward slash media directory. The next directory we want to talk about is the forward slash MNT, or mount directory. Um, what that is, is the directory where you temporarily mount your file systems and devices manually, not uh, automatically as done here in the media directory, but these are where you manually mount file systems 
or manually mount partition devices um, that you mount in the Linux system and use. Okay. Um, and the, uh, the file that controls this on reboot uh, for permanent uh, mounting of uh, file systems and devices is your forward slash etsy forward slash fs table or fstab file. And uh, we looked at that in a previous video. The next directory is the forward slash opt for optional. And these are optional application software packages that get installed in here. So if you install third party uh, software in your Linux system, for instance, more than likely forward slash opt directory is where those are going to go. The next directory I want to talk about is forward slash proc. And uh, these are where your virtual file system uh, reside for providing process and kernel information for files. So for instance, if you wanted to uh, find out information about your CPU, for instance, you could run uh, a cat of, or concatenation, cat command against the etc proc CPU info direct subdirectory, and that would tell you information about your CPU, for instance. Forward slash root is the home directory for the root user. Remember I told you that uh, root has its own home directory? Well, here it is. This is forward slash root. And uh, this is usually not even accessible by regular users. So in the GUI, you're going to see an X on that directory most likely. It means it's not accessible. Uh, root has its own home directory for storing things that only root can access. Next directory is the forward slash run, and these are where, uh, this is where rather the runtime variable data resides on the system. Um, and uh, this directory is also used for housing temporary uh, file systems, the TMPFS files. That's what the run directory does. Forward slash sbin is uh, the essential system binary files, things like, like file system checker init and uh, and route the forward slash srv is site specific data served by the system that's the service directory similar to what the um, service um, in the control panel the service file does in windows and in linux the srv file is where site specific data is served by the system uh, things for services like FF, ftp servers web servers that kind of thing so your server-related information data go into the SRV subdirectory of the root. Forward slash SSYS, which is the system uh, directory, contains information about devices, about drivers, and some kernel features. So the system directory in uh, Linux is where those things go. Forward slash TMP is what it looks like. It's the temporary or temp directory of your Linux system. This is where temporary files go. You can use this as a, as a user, standard user in Linux. You can use this to store things. Just keep in mind that if you do do that, um, you're not going to stay in there very long because uh, the janitorial service within Windows, I mean within Linux rather, will uh, get rid of them over time. This is where they are stored temporarily. Um, and a lot of uh, installations uh, um, in the installations of, of packages in Linux. A lot of files get put in here temporarily by the system because they're files that can be deleted later in the janitorial service in Linux will pick those up and delete them. So don't keep anything in there very long long term. Forward slash USR is the secondary hierarchy for read-only user data. Uh, it gets its throwback from uh, the USR is a really a um, shortcut for Unix. can't remember what SR stands for. The first letter is U for Unix. Um, and uh, But it, we usually refer to it as the user directory. And this is where your read-only user data. And then uh, we've got the forward slash var directory. And as the name uh, implies, it's where variable files go files that uh, are of variable length, such as log files that come and go, they grow, expand, and contract. Uh, spool files for mail. So mail spool files get put in here as well. Okay. 
So that's the last directory I wanted to really talk about. I uh, just wanted to introduce you to the structure of the Linux file system and let you know that it is controlled somewhat by convention through the file system hierarchy standard. And so let's get out of here and get into the uh, file manager. I've already got it open here for the file system. I'm on the file system itself. And note here in the GUI, uh, in the file manager in the Linux system I'm in, which is Debian 10 Buster, notice there's a little arrow here on the bin directory. If you recall, showed you in the tree here of the file directory structure uh, in Linux, the bin points to the user bin directory with a shortcut, basically a shortcut like in Windows, but it's called a symbolic link. In the, um, not absolutely a shortcut, but it's somewhat similar to that, and that's what we refer to it and look at it that way. Well, that's reflected here in this arrow that points down, which means that the bin directory is actually pointing to as a shortcut for another directory, and that's the user bin directory. So it's a directory in the user here, user bin, okay? All right, so we have the boot directory, the dev, the Etsy home. Lib is another one that points to another um, shortcut here or symbolic link, user lib, back here. We get into the user directory again, so you have a user lib. That's where that points to. Then we get media, mount, opt, proc. Now notice I mentioned earlier root has an X most likely in the GUI, and there it is. You can't get into it as a standard user in Linux. It's not accessible. Uh, run, sbin, service, system, temp, user, bar, etc. All right, so this is what it looks like in the GUI in the file manager. All right, so this has been a, uh, a review of, or a quick look, rather, uh, of what the binaries and uh, other files and other things that get stored in the Linux system, you know, optional files, mounted files, file systems, media that get mounted. These are the directories that house those. And we, in this system, we've got 22 directories. And so we just have a quick look at the directory structure in Linux and the hierarchical system, how they're uh, all underneath the root directory, okay, uh, in, um, the Linux system. And so hopefully this was a helpful video. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up on the video. If you um, haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that and hit the bell off the right hand side when you do so that uh, you get notified every time I um, upload a video. And so this has been um, a quick look at the file system in Linux with Data Pioneer. Have a nice day and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.